Hi, I'm Alexi. Welcome to Alexis Guitars. This is part two of my Double Cut Junior Scratch build. If you haven't seen part one, I've linked it in the description below. Be sure to check it out. This build continues to be an awesome learning experience for my Luthier skills, which any Luthier watching will know that I need learning from my mistakes. And speaking of mistakes, after all that successful work that you saw in part one, where I rough cut the body and I even got as far as radiusing the fretboard, I ran into my first setback. Though I'm just gonna say from now, I'm so happy this mistake happened. I'll tell you why and show you why later. So episode one ended with me radiusing the fretboard and that left me unfortunately with a very uneven radius because I was just freehanding it. This would have been completely unplayable, but at this stage, it technically was still fixable. The problem was that my solution to try and fix this was to be a bit over ambitious, and I built myself a router jig. Now, this is one of those jigs where the router sits on a base that can swivel at a 12 inch radius. Now, those are really cool jigs, and I set one up and it kind of worked for the first few passes, but then the base that was holding the router slipped and the fretboard got completely destroyed. Well, from this, I learned a new skill, which was removing a fretboard using the iron technique to heat it up and uh, melt the glue or loosen up the glue so that I can essentially separate the fretboard from the neck. This was a fairly easy job, just a bit boring. It took about 45 minutes to an hour to completely separate the fretboard from the neck and the results were pretty good. It just needed a clean up. So I put some sandpaper on my straight edge and was good to go. Now this here is my replacement Wenge fretboard and this is also the reason why I'm so happy I made the mistake that ruined the first fretboard. Look at that beautiful grain on this Wenge. I went for a pre-slotted fretboard this time just to save a bit of time catching up to essentially where I was before I made the mistake. And this is what I should have done right from the beginning. Just simply put two straight edges next to the fretboard to guide the radius and block and make sure it's sanding everything nice and evenly. This was my first time making a volute, so I was just experimenting and eyeballing it. I tried uh, with a Shinto rasp and a range of different files, and in the end I'm really happy with the rough cut that you'll see in a moment. So as you can see, I finished up with a heel. Pella's really happy with it too. And I worked to try and get a nice smooth transition here, which was my main goal. I used a range of tools, different chisels, loads of sandpaper, as you can see, files, rasps, and in the end, I'm really happy with the result. It needs another sand before going into any finishing stage, but I'm a long way away from that at the moment. The volute has also been cleaned up, and for my first time doing this, could have been a lot worse.
It was right about here where I really started to regret that I used stainless steel frets. To give you an idea how tough the stainless steel fret ends were, the fret ends actually filed away in my file. So I had to switch to this one, which is admittedly a much better file and got the job done. This is my first time using a leveling file. Normally I just use a straight edge with some sandpaper attached to the end of it. And I'm not sure which tool I prefer for the job really. This one works great, but you need to be careful not to apply any pressure because the file does take away a fair bit of material compared to the sandpaper. So I really spent a long time trying to polish up these frets as much as I could. And I used these foam pads, which are different, gr different grits. And there's about seven or eight of them in a pack that work their way up to higher grits. And I just simply started at the rougher one and worked my way all the way up. And in the end, it really did give a nice mirror shine. So I really recommend these. I love the look of these brass rings as side dots against the Wenge fretboard. The only thing I don't really love is how wonky I installed them. Oh well, there's always next time.
I'm relieved to say that installing the bridge was fairly successful, although there are two small issues which need resolving, luckily they have some fairly simple solutions. The first is that I used a drill bit that was slightly too large, so the pegs here just slide in and out quite easily, which obviously isn't good. But there's a fairly easy solution I'm quite eager to try out, which is where you wrap these in paper which has been soaked in wood glue, hammer them in, leave it overnight, and then by the next morning they'll be pretty secure in there. Now the second issue is to do with the height of the bridge. So if I put my straight edge on the frets and extend it out, ideally what I would want to happen is for it to clear the bridge. But as you can see, it doesn't do that. It's about a millimeter too low. This luckily also has a few easy solutions. I just need to pick which one I want to do. I could re-sand the angle in the heel, but I don't really like this option because I'm happy with how low the fretboard is. I really don't want the fretboard to be lower than the body. I could glue a shim into the neck pocket itself, but it might be a bit tricky to clamp that shim down evenly. Now the third solution, which sounds the easiest to me, would be to simply glue some veneer onto the heel itself, basically raising it a millimeter or so. I have this beautiful piece of flame maple veneer, and I thought actually it might be quite fun to mix the woods and use this as the shim on the heel. And that way, there will be a tiny bit of flame maple poking out on the heel, which I think might be a pretty cool feature. And here we are. Now this neck is included at this stage, I've just pressed it into the neck pocket, but this project is really coming along nicely. A lot of work got covered in this video, so I just wanna give you my thoughts. Now the neck is a real baseball bat thick neck, which I absolutely love. Now, when I built my first guitar neck, which was on this guitar here, I also made it a super thick neck just because I didn't know any better. And that's where I discovered my love for thick necks because they just feel so comfortable in the hand, just like this one does. I'm also happy with the fret work. It's definitely the best fret work I've done. Um, it feels nice and smooth along the sides. There's no sharp edges pointing out, but you do still feel the fret ends a little bit. It's not sticking out the sides, but on top. So I I think I just need to round off the edges a little bit more. I did actually buy a separate fret end dressing file, so that's gonna help me a little bit just to really round these off and make this the most comfortable playing experience I can. The next big question on my mind is, how do I finish this? Now, I'm thinking I'm gonna stain it, but there's still a few questions. First of all, what color? But also, am I gonna stain everything, apart from the fretboard, obviously? Or am I just gonna stain the front and leave the back and neck a natural color? Which brings up another question, am I gonna be oiling this, which will be a nice feel finish, or shall I put some lacquer on this to shine it up a little bit and give it a bit more protection? I'm still thinking about it, but let me know in the comments below what you think will be a good finish for this Double Cut Junior. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. Drop me a comment below letting me know your thoughts on the build so far. And if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing so you don't miss the next episode. I'll leave this video here for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. That's all for me for today. Till next time.